Hi, I'm Michael Dye, and in this video we're going to be talking about the Eastern Indigo Snake. If you've grown up in their historic range, you've probably heard someone call it the blue indigo. They eat the bad ones. And that's typically the only good thing you hear about any snake. And yes, indigo snakes are known to eat all the venomous snakes in their range. But you know what? I would like you to know a little more about this king of snakes. Understanding more about this top predator will give you an appreciation about the habitats it calls home. Let's start with its name, the indigo snake. Indigo snakes have shiny scales. When the sun hits the scales, it reflects back a dark iridescent blue. And that's where their name comes from, the indigo. Indigo itself is actually a plant that produces blue dye, which is kind of funny to me when someone says blue indigo because indigo is already known to mean blue. So it's kind of like saying teeny tiny but hey, to each his own. Some indigos have red, black, or milky white chins. The further south you go, the more red they seem to have. The average length for indigos are 60 to 80 inches with the males being larger. And that's something to know because when it comes to snakes, females are typically the larger ones. The record is eight foot six inches, which makes the indigo the longest native US snake. Indigo snakes are daytime active foragers. They eat at least 48 species of prey, including other snakes and small gopher tortoises. However, rodents make up most of their diet. Indigo snakes don't constrict, they overpower using their body mass and strong jaws. They will even swallow their prey alive. Now let's talk about where they like to live. And that depends on where in their range and what time of year it is. In the northern parts of their range, which is South Georgia and South Alabama and North Florida, in the summertime, they spend most of their time around lowlands and wetlands. In the winter, they move up to the uplands like longleaf pine savannas and scrub, where they use gopher tortoise burrows and other subterranean holes to spend the cold nights. The further south in their range, the less seasonally dependent they are on uplands and gopher tortoise burrows. Their range goes through the whole state of Florida and historically used to go straight through the Keys. There might be a few down there still left though. Keep your eye out if you live down there. In South and Central Florida, they act actually inhabit a wide variety of ecosystems like pine savannas, scrubs, pine rocklands, dry prairies, tropical hammocks, and even around marshes and mangrove swamps. Now I'm leaving out a few. However, I know if you really care, you're going to research it. Surprisingly, they were also used disturbed and man-made habitats, such as agricultural areas, ranches, groves, and even canal banks. Along with indigo snakes habitat diversity, they have a really large home range. In some cases, over a thousand acres. My understanding is the further north you go, the larger their home range is. Having a large home range for indigo snakes can be a problem. Let me tell you why. Indigo snakes in the northern parts of their range are seasonally dependent on upland habitats. They're going to travel longer distances between their summer and winter grounds. This means they're likely going to cross roads and areas of habitat fragmentation. Unfortunately, most people don't like snakes. When they see a big snake crossing the road, they're likely going to run it over. And this is a good time to mention, indigo snakes have been federally listed as threatened since 1978. They've been protected in Florida since 1971. They were protected because of population declines that were tied to habitat loss and dwindling populations of gopher tortoises. That's it for this video. I hope it sparked or broadened your knowledge. If you want to learn Florida's six venomous snakes, click on the suggested video. Thanks. Bye.